Overseas, it's unclear when and how, but Israel has vowed that it will respond to Iran's weekend missile strike. The promise came from the country's military chief, while Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been meeting with top officials to discuss a possible response. But as the tensions grow in the Middle East, more leaders have been urging Israel not to retaliate. Manisa Dandabalan joins us live with more on this. Manisa, any speculation on the type of response we can all expect? Nicole, what many are asking right now is how will Israel respond? Well, while in U.S. intelligence expects it will be limited in scope, the State Department says they don't know Israel's plans just yet. They have not. We have been in close communication with them, uh, as well as other partners in the region over the past few days. The secretary has continued his consultations. As the threat of a response to Saturday's attack looms, Israel hasn't informed the U.S. of what they're planning to do. Meanwhile, Iran's president warns that any actions against his nation's interests will be met with consequences. According to Israeli officials, more than 300 projectiles were fired at the country this weekend. Today, Israeli military displayed what they say is an Iranian ballistic missile from the attack that was retrieved from the Dead Sea. While it's unclear what kind of action Israel will take, experts say the choices are unlimited, but they will have to weigh the consequences. And it's going to come down to, a, to how the, the Netanyahu government and, and the people in the cabinet weigh all of those considerations, weigh the risks of what Iran might do what might happen in the region, the consequences of its diplomatic relationships with allies, what kind of pressure they can exploit against Tehran, what kind of pressure they might invite on themselves if they are seen as going too far in the response. With a growing number of world leaders trying to de-escalate the situation, Israel has pressure to respond with caution. Look, I mean, there's no doubt that um, the Israeli government is uh, first, I mean, ha has noted the, the importance of allies in uh, countering the, uh, the the initial barrage, right? I mean, this was a significant multi-tiered defensive operation. So I think that they are uh, obviously mindful of concerns. Russian President Vladimir Putin and Egypt's foreign minister are urging restraint from both Israel and Iran. Egypt is entangled in the Mideast crisis, both geographically and diplomatically. Well, I've spoken to both uh, foreign ministers uh, in an effort to to convey the importance of uh, maintaining uh, tranquility and peace and uh, not to uh, engage in a cycle uh, that uh, will only bring about uh, more uh, instability and, and will have a very negative effect on the peoples of the region. Uh, this uh, constant uh, resort to, to military activity uh, of one kind or of another is uh, not a, in any way uh, helpful. Germany's foreign minister traveled to Israel today to discuss how to de-escalate the tension. Insbesondere Drittstaaten. In a press conference, Annalena Baerbock stressed the importance of third-party countries not being drawn into the violence, adding that those countries will not accept it if their territories turn into a proxy war zone. Meanwhile, Jordan foreign affairs minister echoed those calls but added that Netanyahu wants to draw attention away from Gaza and focus on his confrontation with Iran. He's not alone. Since the weekend attack, many leaders have been highlighting the continuing need to address the devastating humanitarian crisis in Gaza. According to reports, the U.S. will restrict Iran's foreign minister's travel in New York while he's in the city for a United Nations meeting. Nicole?